Thank you very much. Uh, it's an honor for me to be with you and share some of my thoughts on this. And it was really interesting to walk into the room and see this, citizen matters. And I would like to have seen a slight different wording. I would have liked to see, yes, citizens do matter. Citizens do play an important role in Europe and in the decision making and in everything that we do. Because we, as elected MEPs or politicians on whatever level, be it municipality or regional or national or European, we are here always to serve and never to rule citizens. Always to serve. And I try to say that to myself when I look myself into the mirror every morning when I brush my teeth. You're here to serve and never to rule. So it was a really nice remembrance to see this little banner laying here. Um, maybe I should just give a brief introduction why I was invited to this uh, to, to share some time with you this morning. I am a member of this house in 2009. And this mandate, I'm the chairperson of the petitions committee. And the petitions committee is the only direct link between the European institutions and the citizens. Unless you're fortunate to live next door to an MEP, that is. <laughs> so we are, what we're doing, trying to do in the petitions committee is that there is a gap. There is a wide gap like this, where citizens are here in the 28 member states and the elected ones are here. And there is a gap in between. So what we are trying to do is to sort of bridge the gap between citizens and the European institutions. It's easy to say, but believe me, it's difficult to do. But at least this is the intention. Not every national parliament have a, a petitions committee. In Sweden, for instance, where I'm from, we do not have one. Um, in, in other countries, I met just the other day the Scottish Petitions Committee, and excellently elaborated. Um, so things are different out there in, in, in the different European member states. So I think I'll come back to what happened in the, in the last elections in, in, in May this year, where we must admit even if it's difficult, that we're all losers. We're all losers. Every party lost. Every, that is, every party based on an ideology lost. And the parties that are based on something else, but not ideology, could be liberalism, that's preferable, of course, to me, and to Mr. Maura, <laughs> but it could be also, could be socialism, environmentalism, conservatism, Christian democracy, could even be communism. Those are built on an ideology and we all lost high time. And the ones that are built on hatred and skepticism towards Europe and, and what Europe stands for, nationalistic, xenophobic, they gained in numbers. So we should really keep this in mind all the time, that we're all losers. And what we should do is to realize the gap that I was trying to, to start with, the gap between the elected ones and the institutions and the citizens, on the other hand. Because they feel that there is a huge gap, a big distance. On the other hand, I'm from Uppsala in Sweden. And if, I, if I'm walking in the street in Uppsala, I say, ah, you're so far away, you're in Brussels. Yeah, far away if you consider two hours and 10 minutes far away. And they say, ah, we don't know how many you are, how many Swedes you are in the European Parliament. And I say, we're 20. Ah, we don't, we, of course we know you, but we don't know the others. Okay, this is just reluctance. Because when I question them and I say, do you know in this building, which is the local municipality, do you know the mayors? Do you know the elected ones from your own neighborhood? They cannot, they cannot give me 20 names. So to blame Brussels is a normal way of just saying it's too far away, we don't care. 
it's a different country. But if you really question, do you have an influence on the municipality decision making? Do you know your local elected members? No, in most cases. So what we need to, to underline is that we, as elected, be it on, a, on any, any level from municipality to European Parliament, we are not a different kind of animals. We are human beings just as everybody else. And if we, if we have that perspective that we are here to serve and never to rule, then I think it's a good point of departure. In the petitions committee, we are dealing directly with citizens' difficulties, with European legislation, with the implementation, or the conflict between national legislation and European legislation in very practical manners. I try to put down on just what we have dealt with in the recent month could be environmental issues, and there Spain is on top, really. Mo a lot of petitions come in from Spain, hundreds every year. Could be on waste management, flooding, uh, f river basins that are not pr managed properly, could be food, um, food um, issues, uh, could be food security, could be... Hmm could be oil drillings, Ooh, that's a huge Spanish issue. Could be construction projects in the, in, in the coastal area. Yeah, we have a lot of petitions like that. Could also be discrimination on the labor market. Child custodies, child abduction cases, where, the, where one parent in a maybe um, cross-border marriage, loses custody of his or her children after a divorce, and ha abductions, how simply one parent grabs the kid and goes away somewhere. So what we need to do is to see if the issue is in compliance with EU law, or if the law is insufficient. In other words, it could be in conflict with national law or the, could be a, a loophole in the legislation, be it the national or the European. So that is what we're trying to do. And we are a non-judicial body. We are not a court. We cannot give any judgments or, or fine people or, or countries, but we are trying to find non-judicial remedies and solutions. And very often we are successful. Just the other week, I sent myself a letter and I signed it by hand to a president in a member state concerning an, a access to, to medical, uh, medical aid um, where the national authorities were actually in breach with national legislation. And... Uh, and uh, this, the person's uh, bills were not paid for, so she was left to God knows what kind of solution. So she, she sent this all to us. I, I wrote to, to the president in person and said, this, is, this has now happened, and this is a, a, a very obvious case where national legislation has not been applied according to a court ruling that we had, that was a precedent court ruling. And only a few weeks after, we got a, a positive reply saying th this will be t taken care of. So it's a very simple way of remedy a situation that seems to be impossible to find a solution for, for, for the individual. So um, we work together with the commission, of course, if we need the, the expertise in the Commission to, to, to find out um, a court ruling, if it's properly implemented in a country where, where we stand in the implementation, implementation process, um, how national legislation is actually functioning. And so we, we are in constant 
cooperation with the national authorities, but also with the Commission, of course. And we all, and what we do then is that when we have have a petition, we try to set an agenda for for a hearing where we sort of cluster related things together and then we invite the petitioners so sometimes it's rather moving to see them traveling thousands of kilometers to come to to brussels and to present their case and be in dialogue with us and we can raise questions and the commission is there sometimes the experts from from a member state well sometimes it's really a fantastic moment where you feel that, okay, the EU institution, the European Parliament, it's a huge place with a lot of people. But at the end, it, at the end of the day, it's the individual that is in the center for the attention. So in that sense, uh, I think I'm the luckiest of all the 751 MEPs being the chairperson for the only committee dealing directly with citizens and their needs and their problems and facing them and taking them seriously. Sometimes we cannot solve a problem, but the, what we always can do is to listen and show respect to people and take them seriously. In the previous meeting there was a very also moving again case where, where an old man came from Great Britain and he had petitioned us for something together with some 28 other persons. They were quite old and they had been put in jail for more than a month because of they had exercised their right to protest, to strike. So it was a labor market case, but based on, on national legislation, something that happened 82, 1982 or something like that. But the scars were obvious in this man's life. And the British authority, the, the UK authorities have not done anything to remedy the situation. So what we did together with the commission is that we asked to see how this behavior was in compliance with the at that time existing laws. But what I could do was to propose in addition to doing this form formalities, we can always write to the UK authorities, to the government, from the petitions committee saying that the least thing you should do is to give a formal apology to all the people that were humiliated in this way. I don't know if they will do it, but at least they will get a formal letter saying that the European institution wants you to take this seriously. Seven of those people had already died. So, I mean, it's something that you can always do to show that you take people seriously. I don't want to bore you with many more uh, stories like this, but I'm telling you that uh, citizens m do matter and we are taking them seriously. I'm open to any kind of questions that you might have.